Cassie's sister seemed unwilling to open the door this time. Cassie waited patiently as rainwater dribbled down her clothes to puddle on the doormat under her bare feet. She dared not move a muscle or twitch or wipe her runny nose with her sleeve because she could see a pair of mismatched eyes through the leaded glass panel in the center of sister's front door. The eyes were watching Cassie, assessing her condition. One eye belonged to Cassie's older sister and was like a mirror to her own gray eyes. The other eye was the blue eye of sister's baby that floated at the level of Cassie's bony chest. A shape, blurred like an underwater vision by the leaded glass, came into focus, and she could see it was the splayed endpoint of a tiny pointing finger. That's it. Come just a little closer, Chicky, Cassie mouthed soundlessly to the baby. There was a loud clap of thunder and flash of light, but Cassie waited without flinching. Sister turned the brass doorknob and Cassie entered the house. Sister always had the air conditioner on as if she didn't trust nature to make its own atmosphere. The cold blast of refrigerated air slapped her wet clothes. Look at you, where are your shoes, said Sister. I don't know, Cassie said, they're not on my feet. Sister slammed the door against the wind and rain. Take off those clothes. No, not in my clean hallway. Take yourself into the laundry, please. She followed Cassie into the laundry room, which was larger than Cassie's first and only apartment. Sister would not leave Cassie's side, not this time. Sister's baby stared, and Cassie wormed her finger into the plump stomach of the cherubic child. The child squirmed away, pushing at Cassie's finger. Babies belong in trash cans, thought Cassie. And with a smile, Cassie drew a smiley face on the baby belly. The smiley face tickled because this time Cassie wanted it to tickle. Baby laughed, pumping her fat little legs up and down on Sister's hip like Sister was a horse. Cassie dropped her ripped jeans and t-shirt onto the linoleum floor. She wasn't wearing any underwear. Her arms were thin as sticks and crisscrossed with fine scratches. Sister watched her like she was spoiled to meat. Oh, why are you here? You were supposed to be taking care of Mama. Mama takes her medicine and she sleeps and sleeps and it makes me tired to watch her sleep all the time. Cassie tried to snatch a plush white towel from the open dryer. Not one of those, here. And his sister handed Cassie a faded yellow beach towel. She wrapped it around her body tightly. Cassie was shorter than her sister and the ragged edge of the towel almost reached her ankles. Well, how did you get here? Did you steal Mama's car? It's my car, I drove Mama around. Please don't tell me that you wrecked the car. Was anyone hurt? No, I wouldn't do that. I'm the one who takes care of it, just like I take care of Mama. Cassie, for God's sake, why are you here? Sister sighed and handed Cassie a baggy sweatsuit. Cassie rolled the pants at the ankle so she could follow Sister into the kitchen without tripping. Just tell me the story, Sister said across the kitchen table. Cassie opened her mouth, but Sister stopped her with a raised hand. The short version, please. Cassie and Mama had fought over what to eat. Cassie only ate vegetables. Mama only ate meat and potatoes. It was fried chicken night, according to Mama. But Cassie cried over the headless chicken and its yellow tray until she made herself sick. Mama was furious and whipped Cassie with a switch whenever she came within reach of the recliner. Early that morning, Cassie took money from Mama's purse and left the house. Thief, cried Sister, and Sister's baby hid its head in her breast. My wages, mumbled Cassie darkly with arms crossed over her small chest. Well, how did you get here then, said Sister. I walked to the bus depot, but didn't have enough to buy a ticket because Mama doesn't ever keep much in her purse. An old man with a mustache offered me a ride, said it was on his way. He had lots of wrinkles and his big stomach rested on his belt, so I figured I could outrun him if he tried anything. Instead of bringing me straight to the mall up the street from your house, like I asked him, he took me to the Motel 8 a few blocks away. <coughs> a few blocks away. I bet he was mad enough to spit bricks when he realized I left his car while he was in the motel office. I walked from there because it's not far. Something awful could have happened to you. Why do you take such chances? But nothing awful happened. I took what was owed to me, and I need your help, sister. Maybe it's your turn to take care of Mama. I don't have anything to do with her, and you know that. Why you keep asking? I have my own baby to protect now, and I do, by staying away. I don't see how you stay with her. Mama is too weak to force you, so why stay? She is the mother, said Cassie, and babies belong in trash cans. No, said Sister angrily. Big babies belong in the doghouse. I want to see those forearms flat on the table. Cassie obediently bent over the kitchen table with both hands down. 
Sister rushed to her side. No, I mean flat on the table like this. Sister turned Cassie's palms down so that her forearms from fingertip to elbow rested on the table surface. Stay there, ordered Sister. Do not move a muscle. Sister looked at Baby. Del Baby, holler if she moves and I'll be back like Mr. Flash. Baby laughed and clapped her hands. Cassie watched Sister's baby through the curtain of her hair. Baby looked at her dispassionately as she chewed on a mourn teething ring. Cassie stuck out her tongue and Baby paused in her chewing. She flicked her tongue in and out of her mouth like a lizard until Baby laughed. Tentatively, Baby stuck her tongue out like a snail testing the air. Cassie wagged her tongue and wrinkled her nose. With great concentration, Baby wrinkled her nose. Cassie clapped for her. Baby clapped too because clapping was a game she knew how to win. Sister was making loud banging noises in the next room. Cassie and the baby froze as the sound of scraping grew louder. There was a loud thump as the cage that Sister was pulling into the room hit the wall, taking a chunk out of the plaster. Sister cursed loudly. Baby said, Mama, look, and stuck out her tongue. Sister cursed. I leave you alone with her for a minute? Sister finished pulling the cage into the living room. The cage was made of wire mesh and big enough to house a large dog or a small woman. Sister opened the door to the cage and looked at Cassie. Okay, you know what to do. Get in. Cassie got down from the table and walked into the cage on her hands and knees. Sister closed and latched the door behind her. Sister picked baby up, but baby pushed against her chest, crying, struggling to gain the floor. Sister put her down and baby scooted across the floor with astonishing speed. Like sister, baby had milky skin that was dimpled and plump from overfeeding. She crawled in a circle around Cassie's cage and cackled as Cassie spun around on her knees to keep baby in her sights. Cordelia, stop that. It's time for your nap. Sister tried to grab the child, but she was quick and slippery. Del. Del was strong and nimble. Sister managed to grab her shirt by the back, and that should have been the end of her freedom. But Del was closer to the ground, and Sister had never lost the 25 pounds she gained during pregnancy two years ago. Del spun quickly back between Sister's legs, and she lost her balance and fell. Sister made a loud thump as she hit the floor. Are you okay? asked Cassie. She moved as close to Sister as the cage would allow. Sister was quiet, but her breathing was labor labored. Yep, I'm okay. That hurt like hell, Sister said. Del crawled to her mother and patted her on the shoulder. Boo-boo, Mama? Hey, Sis, I'm glad that she's finally talking, said Cassie. Yep, simple sentences, mostly. Everything is a boo-boo lately, and Sister started to chuckle. Cassie started laughing, too, and Del looked from one to the other quizzically as their laughter grew louder. Then Baby snorted and sinned, shouted, boo-boo. Both women fell into a fit of helpless giggles as Baby continued to shout her favorite word. <coughs> Gradually, the laughter died down, and Sister asked, Are you back in night school? Cassie leaned against the bars of her cage. I took a poetry class last spring, but Mama hates it when I read in my room. She wants me in the living room with her. She likes the TV loud, and it fills my head until nothing else can get in. You could visit Mama by yourself, said Cassie. It makes her so sad that she never hears from you. I want her to feel sad. Mean, Sister. Sure I am, and I had the best teacher in how to be meanness personified. You didn't tell Mama my address, did you? If she comes after you, I swear that you will be sorry. I left her a note that I was here, and we'd be back in a few days. I asked Mrs. Park to sit with her in the afternoons until I get back. Mama has enough drink and smokes, and the diner delivers. You told her you were coming here, Sister shouted, as loudly as Mama knew how to shout. It hurt her, but Cassie was used to loud voices. She would have sent the police looking if I didn't. Your address is here, Cassie said, tapping her forehead. Nowhere else. She does not know where you live. Sister looked at her. You did all that to get here? Cassie nodded. Why? I have questions, and I need your help with Mama. Not again. And Sister rolled on her side to face Cassie. Cassie looked back with a direct gaze that surprised Sister. OK, let me tell you about Mama. She is so funny nowadays. She tried to light a cigarette last week. I didn't ask, OK? And besides, that's not news, Cass. She's been smoking for, what, 50 years? <coughs> but she wasn't holding a cigarette in her hand. Cassie held her stomach as she laughed. She tried to light an invisible one, and she almost caught her nose on fire. Sister was unmoved. I don't want to hear this. That is not fresh news either, sister. 
Cassie replied, turning away. Cassie chewed on the Milky Way that Sister had passed to her through the bars of her cage. Sister fed little bits of chocolate and caramel to Baby from her own candy bar. Her teeth are going to rot before they've broken through her gums, Cassie noted. Not true, said Sister, smiling, as she gave Baby another piece. Sister, what did my baby look like? Cassie tried to put all the sweetness of her being into the question in the hopes that Sister would respond to the sweetness, for Sister loved sweet things, and perhaps this time the sweetness would bear fruit in an answer. Like a bloody mess, a mess with a hungry mouth. Cassie hardly dared to breathe. Hair? Black forelock, Sister said. Looked like you when you came out of Mama. Lots of dark hair and noise. From the moment you were born, you knew how to make noise and trouble. Cassie laughed. <coughs> Mama says that too. Did it have a little dingle? No. Girl then, Cassie nodded approvingly. Yes. Which trash can? Cassie asked attentively. For heaven's sake, Cassie, what does it matter? Do you really think the same damn trash can is sitting in the alley behind our old house? Do you really think that Mama would let me see? Sister popped the last bite of candy into her mouth and straightened her shirt as she sat up. Cassie, just drop it, all right? The doctor said that thinking about it will make you sick again. And you don't want to be sick again, do you? Cassie shook her head sharply from side to side. They shocked me with electricity. They made me forget a lot of things that I didn't want to forget. I'm going to stop there. Thank you.